Good morning. We have made it to the closed TOC meeting where we are reviewing sandbox applications. Um, the very first one up is boomerang flow, and I'm going to hold the floor open for folks to be able to discuss boomerang flow. And of note, there are some actual comments in the document as well. So if you can come on and take a look at this one, that would be super. There are plenty of projects under this GitHub umbrella. And I was wondering if anybody found a place where with the reference architecture explaining how all these projects fit together. I couldn't. I had the same pro problem trying to understand also how many people contribute and who's participating. It's, it's pretty split in the GitHub. Um, my observation was that I think this was an IBM originated project at some point. Um, even though they haven't mentioned IBM anywhere prominently. Um, Tyson was an IBMer before, and he's still associated with the project. That was the only thing I could. I found a page, some presentation, where the three people were from IBM. Right. I don't know what to say, to say no to them. <laughs> That's the way I'm looking at it. Would it be better to have them reapply with like more clarity around where their roadmap is or I'm not sure where the confusion is. I, I, I think the confusion is the maturity and uh, yeah, the roadmap. There is a there is specifically a roadmap page, <laughs> planning and roadmap. I didn't see the roadmap page. Can you share it here? The, there's a roadmap repo. Um, oh. Here. Um, but that's that's not. I, yeah, it doesn't have a roadmap. Not, You're right. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have one. So I guess I don't see how it would like if. The basis is we can see this eventually becoming a graduated project at some point. Yeah. I don't get a warm fuzzy. Uh, and uh, the reason that they've given for joining CNCF is not very, um, I, they want contributors and they want us to help with governance and like, you know, they need to be showing that they're already doing something. I don't know. Okay, I have them written down as reapply with a more clear roadmap. Fair? All right, we can move on. And our next one up is Acri. This is a Days Labs, Microsoft. Um, this yeah. has a whole bunch of people working on it. Yeah, definitely a little bit more mature than the than boomerang. Yep. How does it align with other projects like Cubage and Open Yurt? Other projects in the edge domain. I couldn't find this. It's not a. It's not a blocker. I was just curious. Yeah. I think to be this much... project focuses on abstraction of devices instead of a edge platform. So I uh, mean that this project ideally can work with the edge platform to provide abstraction for the edge devices. So. This is something I can uh, figure out from their documentation. But I, I actually asked several maintainers of, for example, Kubi Edge. So they mentioned that they do have intention to have this inter integration with yeah. this project. They still, uh, they require a lot of effort. So they still have no plan to begin to um, put effort to implement that. But ideally, I think that's the relationship of those projects. Yeah. 
Okay, that makes sense. And uh, I like the write up that, that they had for how is your project aligned with the cloud native computing system? Um, you know, that I, I like how they would uh, worded it. Any red flags, anybody else? I don't have any red flags. I think it's a good start, especially for Sandbox something that seems tangible okay yeah, it seems well defined and um good place to find out how much interest there is it's it, nothing else it's too similar it seems to be available seems uh take it to a vote then all right the vote is open All right, that could be passes. We can move on. Metal LB. Uh, the question I had for Metal LB was, did they come, at, come to us before? What did we tell them earlier, if anybody remembers? I think they were missing, uh, they were missing one of the documents that we require, either a roadmap or, or, some, or something else. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that's right, that was a while ago. Well, it wasn't, it's a single maintainer or something. They wanted to just hand it over so it could grow. It, I couldn't tell if they had a lot of momentum behind maintaining it. Uh, Let me look. Yeah, the maintainer wants to step down as in, he's gone away basically. Um, so bringing it here would definitely help. And it is being used uh, by a bunch of people for sure. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how many will step up to be maintainers. I'm a little worried about taking on a project with no maintainers. If the main if the maintainer's goal of joining is so that they can step away, is this destined for a slow death? Can they not look for new maintainers before that? Um, uh, they they have, I believe, they have um, a set of people that are interested. Okay, but, but you know, interest in actually doing the work uh, when they hit CNCF is slightly different, right? So. Yeah. It, it is not a very, uh, it's, a great, it's actually a great product, but it's not a very active project though, with, you know, with contribution, which uh, I can see. So um, I was asking some people about this. Um, the other one is the OpenLB and uh, QVIP is in the similar space, um, but definitely the, the CAPI folks uh, for bare metal a whole bunch of people, including Red Hat and VMware, they're using it for uh, using Metal LB. So from that point of view, it, it has adopters. Now the question is, when they hit CNCF, how many of them will actually uh, help out with uh, maintenance stuff? Yeah, I wonder if this is a chicken and egg problem of it's not part of the CNCF and isn't getting contributions, that kind right. of thing. Yeah. I'm not hearing a call for a vote, but I'm also not sure where to be able to, what to do with this. Yeah, my, my two cents is uh, from everything I hear, it is a popular project in terms of usage, uh, but I think I share the same set of concerns around adoption. Uh, but given kind of sandbox, one of the purposes to encourage uh, more contribute contributors and allow folks to collaborate uh, I think uh, I, I would give it a thumbs up. So I did find the current list of maintainers. Uh, there are four maintainers. Um, it's in, in the Metal LB, 
repository under code owners. So they have four people right now already, and they have um, a doc that uh, has a, you know, how, what do they look for when ad adding new maintainers and removing old maintainers? So they have some, some of these uh, already set up. <coughs> so I think I'll call for a vote. I mean, yeah, I mean, all the four maintainers and the original author voted to submit to CNCF. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, there's a, a, a willingness to. All right, they pass. We can move on. Oh goodness, our next one is this gigantic serverless devs one. Let me see if I can't like somehow get <laughs> to being able to share this because it is so huge. Um, yeah, this is pretty much unfortunately the best I can do right now. I'm very sorry. Uh, Dave, for the previous vote, you messaged me. <laughs> <laughs> um, on my phone in the meeting and on my computer in the spreadsheet. So. <laughs> I don't know how the phone app decides who I message, but it passed regardless. All right. Like, if that happens again, just let me know. For the first vote, it really wanted to message uh, Alina, but I caught that. OK, that's great. All right. I, I will just um, uh, make sure that I am checking for you as well. So for oh. surplus, sorry, go ahead. Uh, for serverless devs, the main thing that I saw was that uh, the whatever they are doing is very specific to uh, the Alibaba platform um, and not uh, they don't work on any other public cloud. I don't know if anybody else got that same. It is in the readme, so it's pretty it clear. Is. Yeah. Okay. And their, their website is 100% Chinese, as far as I can tell. I mean, we've previously turned down projects that don't run on a uh, on an open source backend, and only and only run on cloud service closed source cloud services as a as a kind of principle. I mean, my, I, I, what's what's our policy regarding uh, like uh, localization and stuff? So if you click into the issues, I mean, there's not a whole lot of issues, but 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 every issue is in Chinese as well. Yeah, I don't think there's anything formal that like we require everything to be English. Okay, uh, Cheng, but generally, you know, if you want to build kind of an inclusive community, you want to support, I think, multiple languages, right? Okay. I won't hold it against them um, that their stuff is in Chinese already, but uh, definitely the cloud, single cloud is way more, you know, jarring to me than the language. We could ask them to present to serverless working group and, you know, get a little bit more information from them and, you know, say that it's a little bit hard for the TOC to follow due to the language uh, right now. I think that could be a good idea. Yeah. Plus one to that, Chris. Is it worth also asking them about their single cloud platform mm -hmm. and whether they have any intentions to support intentions, yep. plans, ideas on how they're going to support others? Uh, in their application, they mentioned that once they come to CNCF, with CNCF help, they'll make it multi-cloud or something to that effect, which is not a good feeling. Yeah. All right. I'm happy to leave the comment at um, presenting towards serverless worker 
group and then clarifying that single cloud platform issue and kind of what the roadmap is. Yeah. Okay. I can move us on to Carmada. Um, this is from Huawei, I think. Um, they wrote Cube Fed one and two, and based on that, uh, they they did whatever they are doing here in Karmada. Look, what's the relationship like of this with uh, Kubi Fed? I'm just wondering. Anyone know some background? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that, uh, Harry? I couldn't catch the first. Yeah, because in the meantime, there is a uh, Kubi Fed at the, I think it's Kubernetes Seek project, right? So are these the same or yeah. next generation, something like that? So uh, Q, uh, both Kube Fed 1 and 2 were kind of like Huawei projects. Uh, okay. One, you know, was really bad and two was slightly better, but nobody's taking care of Kube Fed anymore. Um, once the Huawei folks stepped away, I think um, you know we are in the process of mothballing it. Um, so the Sig multi cluster is not even looking at uh, Kube Fed for the for the longest time. So um, you know I'm I'm okay with the concepts that they had in V2 ended up in Karmada is uh, what I got from reading through. Uh, in general, I'm supportive of um, multiple clusters uh, kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's a reasonably active project. Seems seems like seems like people are developing it and using it. So it's a, it's an important topic to to address. There are not a lot of good solutions, so it seems okay to me. Yeah, I think uh, as an exp as another experiment in this direction, it's some you know I think we should encourage experiments, especially if there's ones that haven't worked in the past. We need people need to experiment more. Yeah, I, I would I would also say something like that. Yeah, as a user of V1 and then V2, uh, I, I'm actually quite excited about this project. It's definitely ambitious looking at the M column, all the things that they want to integrate with. It's everything under the sun. I don't know how much of that is actually done. But, um... uh, this is uh, maybe a dumb question, but I think uh, in a previous project, there was a question raised about whether it should be a Kubernetes sub project. Is that a consideration here or how do we decide that? Because it's built on like federation one and two, uh, it's not standalone. Right. Or yeah, it seems like it's, yeah. And it's very, very closely tied to Kubernetes and Kubernetes alone. So, well, I think that's why they expand upon the alignment to the other things. But I mean, I guess you could also say you wouldn't have any of those extensibility points if you didn't have Kubernetes as the basis. So I can see that. Uh, uh, the other point here also is the, uh, the QFED one and two was mostly around like um, deploying and controlling clusters. And now they are talking about way more different things rather than just the, how do we treat all uh, multiple clusters uh, from a single command line kind of thing. Yeah, so another way I can think about it is like, it is way beyond the scope of, uh, say, the SIG multi-cluster in Kubernetes. So they won't fit under uh, one SIG specifically. Got it. Okay. This was actually a common uh, question for, for Fed V2 already. What, which SIG should, should, should it be? Right. So yeah. I guess it makes sense. You are using the Q Fed 2, right, uh, Ricardo? Uh, we we used V1. We tried V2, and uh, didn't really get changes. Uh, we've been looking around. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I guess we call for a vote then. Okay, we can move on. We've got go zero. Carmada's passed. And go zero. Web and RPC framework written in Go. I couldn't see a any overlap directly with CNCF projects was my concern. Um, although it says it's deeply integrated with Kubernetes, I couldn't really see any specific integration. I'm trying to think of what tool we would have that would be even similar type of add-on. Yeah, we don't have anything. That's the thing. Yeah. It's a very different area. I mean, I think that um, it's a applic you know application developer framework. I mean, there's a little looking at it. There's a little bit of it does generate cube YAML files for deployment, but it's primarily developer focused. It mentions Go Micro as its kind of closest similar thing, which I've looked at a little bit a while back. Um, I don't. Know, I kind of like SIGAP to see SIGAP to, to, to perhaps comment on whether they think this is the kind of, given it's a new kind of thing, whether it's the kind of thing they feel is appropriate for CNCF. Yeah. Uh, they have 11,000 stars. <laughs> I mean, usually anything that you know targets developers, you tend to get more stars. Yeah. It's a fundamentally larger user base. Yeah, of course, uh, because it's a framework. Uh, I also noticed something, I don't know if a red flag, uh, if you look at their documentation, um, they mentioned that the documentation is machine translated by Google. <laughs> so I don't know if this is a red flag. It seems that uh, they they actually only write Chinese version, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody mentioned it, but if you look at the issues in the repository, it is all in Chinese. Like I cannot I cannot read the titles. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, also I think has some issue maybe for the you know diverse of the languages. I'm not not sure if it's this array flag, but for the documentation, I think it's not it's not. It's not, I, I do not feel very good to see this is a machine translate. <laughs> they can even, I think, hide all of this uh, English version. They can just provide Chinese. I think it's okay. I, I, I'm sure nobody can read this English version, honestly speaking. <laughs> so ask them to talk to tag apps? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Right. I have a note for present tag app delivery so we can get a little bit more sense of what's going on in here. Let me bring us to our next one. Looks like it's Enclavere containers. Yeah, so this is a um, trust, uh, run C compatible runtime for running in Intel SGX. Um, um, the, um, the, a lot of the code is derived from run C. Um, so it kind of fits in that. I haven't looked at it in a lot of detail yet. Um,
it's it is a it's a they are having to put all the fixes for run CVEs into it, which is kind of um I, I'm just a bit concerned about their um how they're going to manage maintaining it given it's so closely derived from run C, but they've basically just cut and pasted the code rather than um reusing it, which is which is somewhat concerning. <clears throat> Looks like a joint effort between Alibaba and Intel right now. So there are multiple companies involved at least. So, yeah, that is the case. It's a joint effort with Intel and several other hardware providers, I believe. So one question I had here um, is uh, what kind of you know hardware does it need to run? And is it, you know, how how do people simulate or try or test or build um, code for this platform or this project? Right, so it does not require specific, I mean, some special hardware, but uh, it should be uh, in, uh, hardware to support uh, Intel, I think a G, GTX or something like that. So um, it's, it exists in every um, vanilla Intel CPU server, but uh, maybe not well, your uh, local well, machine. Yeah, SGX, uh, sorry, SGX. Yeah, SGX, yeah. I mean, yeah, not, you have to, you have to find the right the right machines. Yes, the right machine. So it's not targeted for, uh, I don't think it's targeted for um, normal developers to play with. <laughs> it should be some, you know, um, big platform or something like that. Or some, uh, for example, bank, they have bought the Intel, they have bought the Intel SGX supported machines. Right, uh, asking that question because, you know, how will they get contributors if people won't have access to the hardware, right? So I think this is my, my guess of this project is mostly targeted for cloud environment. So basically, if you want to play with the whole stack, you need to buy a machine or buy mm -hmm. instance from the cloud. That is how this project is targeting on. Right. Um, except that there's almost no cloud providers that provide access to machines with SGX. Um, um, the, uh, apparently the, there might be some early access in Microsoft and you can get SGX in Alibaba, uh, but you can't get it anywhere else. Would we expect it to be coming at other service providers? I mean, I love the idea of having this this runtime on the specialized hardware. If the, if the hardware is going to become yeah. more widely available, uh, it depends if they're going to provide it as SGX available to the user, or potentially as a service that runs in SGX managed by the cloud provider, or whether SGX is just dead because it's the number of security vulnerabilities in it are. Are too high and no one's really going to ship it, which is mm. the other option, because that's, I mean, uh, and it is, everyone's going to wait for the next generation. Uh, Harry, uh, I, are all the contributors from Alibaba or are the contributors from Intel yeah. too? I see. The users are diverse uh, from yeah. Intel, Alibaba, multiple companies. So I personally, my personal feeling of this project is good. It actually involves a lot of the companies, including I think VMware, a lot of uh, folks who are working with this era. Uh, I think the only issue is whether we believe, uh, for example, Intel, uh, Intel's technology is an industry standard or it's not, right? So besides that, I think the project itself is quite open and um, have a very um, straightforward user value to me. <laughs> There's only two maintainers, one from Alibaba and one from Intel. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, contributors are from multiple companies. I just take a look at all that part. Right. So I think that is a good sign. It means that anybody who's working on this kind of technology are, uh, for, are trying to 
working collaboration, uh, trying to collaborate on this project. This is a good sign to me. So I think the only issue is for whether we want to, you know, adopt a project which targets specifically on Intel SGX. Yeah, I guess I'd be box. curious if there's a similar thing either on whatever, I think AWS calls it Nitro and AMD has their own thing. So if there's like an AWS project, an AMD project and an Intel one, and we accept the Intel one now, that's uh, different not, to me than if there's only an Intel one. Nitro isn't actually in hard, in, isn't a hardware trusted execution environment per se, or uh, well, or partly it is, but it's in, uh, I think mostly it was not an NCPU one because it's not, um, yeah, AM, AMD and ARM obviously, yeah, ARM is working on this stuff as well. And they're all, yeah, they're all currently independent. So, there so maybe is, ignore what I said about Nitro. So there, there's, I mean, the um, Trusted Computing Foundation has projects that abstract over them if I remember correctly, I think Microsoft has a project that abstracts over different CEAs. Yeah. And I'm kind of curious why they decided to put this to CNCF rather than Trusted Computing Foundation, which is perhaps more, more logical. Call for a vote. I guess I'm willing to give them the benefit of doubt. <laughs> what is Sandbox? It's kind of a new area, so I think it's interesting. One more. Dave, did you send it to someone else too? No, this time I didn't. I, I can send it to you. Okay. I, I'm also willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, I guess. All right. Passes, we can move on. Um, we've talked about Podtato Head, and I think I'm going to move on. So cloud-based framework. I think it had the same issue with the language as well, uh, with most of the Talks being all in Chinese. I guess this one goes to the tag apps too. Yeah, I actually have a note here to ask if English is a requirement, but we already discussed it. Yeah, I would like to see Tag App re review it because um, it's a yeah, it's it's again we we it's a it seems to be a, a very opinionated framework, and we haven't ha done that previously. Okay, in the interest of time, I will mark that as tag app delivery and we can move on to T-Base. Comments on T-Base. Tim, Is there oh, Aaron. explanation somewhere of why they want to be in the CNCF? It's not in the stock. Did they provide it 
separately? I don't believe so. Well, they, I mean, I mean they, they filled out that column, but it says really nothing about the cloud. Oh, it, yeah. I would, I'm sorry, I was referring to the, the question around how does this contribute to the cloud native and didn't, <laughs> didn't say a single thing about cloud native. Right. And I had a question about licensing too. I think uh, the BSD three, probably because I don't know what is Postgres. Postgres is, has its own license, and the work is based on Postgres. Um, I thought Postgres was BSD. But I might be wrong. Uh, I'd say similar to BSD or MIT. I think it's. Fine, but I'll double check. There's generally no issues. We may have to get that approved. Right. But the larger question is, uh, how does the database fit into what we are doing here? I mean, if it were a cloud native database and it was talking about cloud Correct. capabilities and um, leveraging some of the other cloud native principles and sure it would fit, but it just looks like a database. And even when you look at the, some of the competitors, those are, those are not cloud native databases. I don't know all of them, but. It was a you little know, green plum. I wouldn't consider it cloud native. <laughs> it's a little bit unclear what has happened to Postgres XL and what the re relationship is. Um, I think one thing that I'm, I have concern with is this project is not as active as a database should be. It seems very required um, in terms of the commits issue and the pull request which I, have, I do have concerns seems like uh, i have worry about uh, this could be or it's maybe a you know just a um, project that open source code without a very active and uh, and uh, you know uh, healthy community behind it this is one thing that currently worries me most they commit directly to the master so i think your observation is is correct um it doesn't look like it's 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 very it's very inclusive and transparent to external contributors. So I think ask them to apply after a year or whatever, um, because I we I guess we tell them that we don't see how they fit into CNCF specifically, and uh, if they reconsider some of the things that they are doing. And maybe apply later. Yeah, we should we should recommend to to revise our GitHub management practices to be more in line with what is recommended for the open source projects. Uh, Dim six months is our usual for being able to reapply. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But more importantly, when they come back to us, they can't submit exactly the same thing. They should show more how it uh, fits into CNCF uh, cloud native things, I guess. That's fine. Okay. Um, we can move on. Our next one is Super Edge. Oh, so these are the folks that listed VMware as a supporter, and I tried to find evidence for it internally, and I couldn't. Uh, but I think, yeah, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> they seem fine to me. 
Uh, um, you you buried every VMware employee in China. I bet that's where it's working. Right. In general, I'm supportive of all the experiments that is going on on the edge. And this, uh, I like the you know how they are trying to do the light API server on the edge node, um, talking back to the Kubernetes API server. Um, so it's something that you know. Some some other folks are uh, exploring as well. They did a really nice job in their submission. Yeah, there were lots of great answers. Thoughtful. I don't have any objections to it. Seems like it has a good trajectory. Especially the sandbox. Um, and the alignment overlap with the existing CNC pro projects, they've really made a good effort there also. So mm -hmm. I'm happy. I'll prove it. Okay. Looks open. All right, they pass. We can move on. We've got Cube Director. Okay, so this one, I think um, Blue Director was. Um, a company that, sorry, Blue Cates was a company that got acquired by HP and uh, H, it's been within HP for a while and now they are trying to open source it. That's the background that I could figure out. Have they gone to the tag apps or just the SIG? Like, was that a long time ago? I was gonna say the same thing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, HP, I have, you know, they've, they've done open source and fits and starts and uh, uh, I'm not too sure about how large their commitment to this is gonna be, I guess. But yes, plus one to ask about uh, tag apps. All right, hearing no objections, I will have them present towards tag app delivery. Okay. Yeah, the other red flag that I can see is um, in the contributor graph, um, you know, the top two or four contributors haven't done any work for the longest time. So it might be in maintenance mode and they just want a home. Mm. When, when we send a sandbox application over to one of the tags, um, oftentimes what I'm hearing us say is we have specific concerns that we would like to ha have the ha tag help us flesh out. Do we provide that level of detail over to the tag and say, here's some concerns that we're looking at or because I'm concerned that they go and present and if they haven't addressed the concerns that we're talking about, then are we back to square one? They've done what we've asked them to do and now we're still like, well, we still have open questions. Good point. Uh -huh. 
so I guess uh, here the specific question is like um, around how much ongoing work and what is the roadmap um, and uh, if this is something that we see fit well into, I guess it fits well because it's Kubernetes, I guess. That would be the answer we get. Yeah, I, it feels to me like it's, is there going to be continued ongoing substantial um, development of this? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Okay, further comments on Cube Director? Hearing none, I will move us on to Cloud Pods. This seems like a multi-cloud management platform, not a, not really a Kubernetes or container platform, is it? Uh, so there is some, uh, uh verbiage in the last column, uh, Shen. Oh. That's a unified IAAS platform, yes. <laughs> right. Open stack. Somebody's proposed an open source open stack. I'm kind of concerned about these giant monolithic projects that are trying to do so much. It is it is a multi it is a it is a it, is a, it, it really ties together IAAS platforms. So. Yes, I think it's something grow uh, in the uh, infrastructure uh, industry. And uh, another thing I, I have concern is if you look at the GitHub org, I think there is a business company behind that, and so I'm not sure if this is actually their core product or something like that. So I think the, there is also a question regarding to that part. I don't know if they answer this in the submission part. Yeah, I will have concern if this is their core product and then the donated to CNCF, uh, which will concern me a lot. A lot. And what on earth does cloud pods have to do with the name cloud pods have to do with the infrastructure as a service? Not finding that connection. So uh, what they're saying is they are running on Kubernetes and uh, they have CRDs. Um, so technically they are, you know, they have the 12 factor apps, whatever, and they are able to manage um, not just KVM bare metal, but also like if any of the clouds provide uh, uh, bare metal machines, then they can, uh, people can use, stitch them together to, to deploy Kubernetes on that, I guess. I don't know. And, VM, the... and VMware vSphere and um, they have their own I, right. I am model and they have, um, I mean, it's, it's a lot of pieces. Yeah, it sounds like they're trying to bite off a lot. And, you know, having, I think one of the areas they're talking about is like object storage and having worked with a cozy project that's trying to do that just for object and seeing how difficult it is, I kind of question how viable it is to tackle even more than that. Uh, for this, we should say, you know, go talk to Linux Foundation and set up something at that level rather than come to us. Yeah, I mean, always happy to chat with them. 
Okay, I'm hearing no objections. It, I, what I believe I'm hearing is this is likely something bigger than just a CNCF project. Okay. All right, we can move on in the last few minutes here. Um, we've got a C++ workflow. Yeah, I don't understand this much. Had they presented before or is it my imagination? Amy? Yeah, I don't remember. I believe so. Okay. Or nothing in my memory is telling me that they have presented before. I personally all think that uh, we well, I think we should for now hold this, for this kind of a business logic workflow. I'm not sure if it actually live is um, the sense project uh, the direction or goal for now. Uh, we may want to discuss that about this. I, 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 so this is actually another um, workflow workflow engine for developers to build a business logic thing like that. I don't even want to send them to tag apps. Yeah. Yeah, the explanation to contribute doesn't really fit in how it enhances the ecosystem either. I guess we go back to the standard thing of like come back after six months and hope they go away. I, what I think I'm hearing here is that this is perhaps not as aligned with cloud native from the application as you would expect. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think being able to say, hey, um, reapply in six months around being able to show like how this fits in CNCF is perfectly fine. And the risk of being able to do like one more, um, we can come back to this one, um, Lagoon. Oh, this one, I remember um, it, it, there's an open source component and there is uh, stuff that is proprietary in-house and it's all mixed, joined at the hip and they're trying to separate it out. Um, that, that was something that I could gather. So they have a, um, a service and the open source codes, I think it still depends on the service. I mean, in general, that's been a hard no from us if it's a requires a closed source service and, and there's no alternative. So they need to fix that. And I think that's a good policy, the hard no for those things. Um, so in the last column, it do, they do say Lagoon still has work to do to make the project itself less amazing.io centric. And we have addressed some of the major challenges and so on. Yeah, this is come back after six months once you have addressed everything, I guess. Yep. Right. Um, in the interest of time, I am not gonna try to move us on. Um, we will pick up um, with Open ELB, um, which is a reapplication in our next meeting. Um, two months from now is going to be November 9th. Yes, November 9th. So. We will come back to this November 9th um, and go through the rest of the list in here. Thank you all. We got through 15, yeah. We got through a lot, so thank <laughs> you very, very much. <laughs>